With the science update almost here, you might be wondering what the best way is to create a Kerbin comms relay. I tried making an SSTO for this video, however, that went incredibly poorly, so we will be doing it with a regular rocket instead. So let's jump right into this. First things first is we need a satellite, of course, with solar panels and a communications dish and all those fancy dancy little things. Also, uh, I know there's an SSTO in the background, like I mentioned. I tried doing it with that, but it didn't work so well, so try and ignore it. Don't forget batteries, otherwise it won't work very well. Also, uh, each of these need their own engines and fuel tanks so that they can get up into the desired orbit after our big rocket takes them up most of the way. Make sure you have plenty of fuel and everything. Step two, you need to build a rocket that is big enough to fit three of these bad boys all at once. You need to do it one in one launch so that they orbits match up perfectly and you need three of them to reduce blackout Kerbin will get in the way if you have less than three it shouldn't be too hard if I can do it I'm sure you can too uh, little pointer if you're doing this before the science update make sure you have lots of struts also if you want to make it easier on yourself make sure you give yourself more than enough fuel to do the mission at hand so the next thing we want to do is we want to grab this handy dandy resonant orbit calculator. You're going to want to put in three or four satellites. You can put in as many as you want, but uh, I would recommend putting in at least three. You're going to grab the synchronous orbit because we want synchronous satellites. I'm in my case, I'm doing a dive orbit, so it's going to be like this. So every time you go around, you're going to dump a satellite at this apoapse. Get this orbit up into the synchronous time, which is 5 hours, 59 minutes, and 9.4 seconds. The crucial point that you want to do is make sure that all three of your satellites or all of your satellites match each other. So whether they're 5 hours, 50 minutes, make them all 5 hours, 50 minutes. They will move across the globe in that case, but they won't move closer to each other, which is what you're trying to avoid. So make Make sure all three of your satellites have the exact same orbital period. That's the crucial part. There we go. Now we have low curve in orbit. We're going to get up to the orbit that the resonant calculator told us. Once we're in that calculator orbit, we're going to basically drop our satellites one at a time, raise their orbits up, and we will have our satellites all ready for Duna missions and all sorts of different stuff. In KSP-1, having a stable orbit wasn't super critical as there were multiple tracking stations. Without mods like MechJeb, it's incredibly difficult to get the orbital period perfectly at the mark for orbiting. As you can see here, we're bringing the orbit period up to 5 hours, 59 minutes, and 9 seconds. If you're curious what I'm using, I'm using the mod called MicroEngineer, and that's as accurate as it gets. It doesn't do microseconds. And that was me trying to see if if it did do microseconds, but uh, it clearly doesn't, so I guess we'll have to get to the nearest second, unfortunately. And there we have it. We have one up in geostationary orbit. That one will hover over the same spot for hopefully ever. It, there will be some drift, I'm not perfect, but the next step is to get the second one up in orbit. So what this uh, difference in, you know, orbit height, it gives you a separation between the three satellites, so that none of them dip below the horizon of Kerbin. I'm not too sure if I'm going to leave this section in, but this is basically me fighting with it, fighting with a bunch of bugs to try and get the darn thing to separate. Docking clamps, they're not your friend in this version of KSP. Okay, there we go. So I got both of them to separate at once. It's not exactly what I wanted because they'll drift a little bit further away from the target orbit. So this one we want to get up to the, about the same orbit period so I'm just watching this getting it up to five hours and 59 seconds and nine seconds there we go we're up to the orbital period and we are unlocking the solar panels and such I just remembered that I forgot to do the last one so I'm going to go over and control that one and unfold those solar panels that's why I put the flat panels in there because I've done it before and I've forgotten and I lost one of the satellites by doing that. 
So we're going to move on to the third one now. Get that third one up at the five hour. We passed it a little bit there. You can see it went into the day. I'm not entirely sure why it went into the day there. I think MicroEngineer must probably round up to six hours for the daytime, but it's actually five hours, 59 minutes and nine seconds and some microseconds in there. So hopefully you now have a fully functional geostationary satellite network. If you enjoyed this bit of educational KSP2 content, make sure you like and subscribe for more. And while you're at it, why not check out this video where I saved our little space frogs from orbit around the moon.